Hello and welcome to Genealogy Gems podcast episode number 268. I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and I'm so glad you're joining me here today. Um, We're going to be having a lot of fun learning how to reconstruct our ancestors' lives using newspapers. And I've got the perfect person to talk with us today. It's Jenny Ashcraft from newspapers.com. Jenny is going to walk us through the story of her grandfather. And in doing so, she's going to help uh, guide us through that process of looking for the opportunities of what to search for, what might be possible to find in newspapers, how to go about finding it, um, filtering down your searches, um, saving them, clipping them, downloading them, all the good stuff so that you, you really do piece together the story. She'll be uh, taking us on a bit of a guided tour of the website. So if by chance you're in front of your computer or on your phone, if you want to go over to newspapers.com and kind of follow along with her, you can do that. But she's going to give you a sense of kind of what the tools are that are built into the website so that you can zero in on finding exactly the kind of information that you want. I'm really excited about doing this today, and I hope you are too. So uh, get your pad and paper, maybe make a list of the kinds of things that you want to be searching for, and let's head over to newspapers.com with Jenny Ashcraft. When we start researching an ancestor, we typically look for their last record, which would be their death record. And since that likely provides their birth date, then we can locate their birth record, But what about everything that falls in between birth and death? A wonderful place to find that story of the life of your ancestor is in newspapers. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but my ancestor wasn't famous or anything. But believe me, they don't have to be famous. Uh, My guest today is Jenny Ashcraft from newspapers.com, and she's going to help prove my point here by showing you how she kind of reconstructed the story of her grandfather's life and how you can do it too. Welcome to the show, Jenny. Thanks. It's so great to be back. It is wonderful to have you back. I, you know, we always love talking about newspapers. This time around, we're really going to talk about uh, one of my favorite things, which is kind of reconstructing the life story of an ancestor, not just the you know, names, dates, places kind of records, but really the events, the people, what they did in their life. And you're letting us know that newspapers really can tell that kind of story for anybody, can't they? Well, it's true. We, we love those vital records, right? As genealogists, we love to have those birth, marriage, death records. But what happened in between? And newspapers is a wonderful way to kind of bring color and stories to your ancestors' life. Um, how did their life impact history? How did history impact their life? You can kind of try to find those stories and kind of piece together a story of their life through newspapers. And I imagine it's not that in every case they actually have to name our relative. It could really be as we're looking at the tree and their their life, what we've found so far, we can find that supporting evidence and information, can't we, to kind of help tell us what was happening at the time. Exactly, because sometimes you might not find your ancestor's name or a newspaper article about a specific event. But what you can do is create a context for what was happening, what was happening in their family, what was happening in their community, the country and the world. Even if you can't find a specific article about them, you can still create a context for what their experiences would have been. Well, I know you've got, uh, you were sharing with me the story of your grandfather, and I just think it's a perfect example. So let's use your grandfather as kind of a test case and have you kind of show us what's the process here? What, where do we start and how do we work with a site like newspapers.com to find these? So I started looking for my grandfather's birth announcement and I couldn't find it. Um, He lived in a tiny town called Panguitch, Utah. It was a short little uh, run of a newspaper, only a few years. It was a weekly, and it was not there. Well, I thought, okay, if I can't find my 
grandfather's birth announcement. And many of us have that same experience, right? So what I started to do was to look for the family. And I found birth announcement, his older brother that was born just two years before him. So I started uh, looking for other clippings that I might be able to find more information about my grandfather. I found just a few months before his birth, I found this little article about his father driving to purchase two seven passenger page automobiles. This is just months before my grandfather's born. And I'm thinking, well, what, you know, what, what is a page automobile? So I searched for page automobiles and there's a picture of one. And (laughs) even though I mean, my grandfather's name is not in this clipping, but I'm starting to get a little context. I get an understanding. This is the car that his father was going to purchase just before his birth. So that's kind of fun. And all of these um, clippings, they start to create a context for this little Norton family. My grandfather's name was Lamar Norton. He was born in a small town in Penguit, Utah. He was a father of seven and a World War II veteran. And I just wanted to learn a little bit more about his life. And so even though I couldn't find a birth announcement, I started finding clippings about his family, uh, his siblings, his parents, and it started to help me create a context for what the Norton family was experiencing in 1915 in Penguich, Utah. Lamar started to grow up And his family moved to another very small town called La Pointe, Utah. And he was living in La Pointe when he met a young woman that would become his future wife. Her name was Velma Hollinger. Well, I wanted to find out if they talked about their marriage in the paper, right? Is there a story and what can we learn about their marriage? And I'm going to search the newspapers.com marriage index. Now, what the marriage index is, is um, our data science team at Ancestry um, figured out how to use data intelligence to scour through all of the newspapers and extract marriage announcements and obituaries. And there's like 250 million um, obituaries and 70 million marriage announcements. And it has created them. And you can go search in newspapers.com and just search for marriage announcements. I am going to search in the marriage index and see if I can find a a marriage announcement for my grandfather. His name was Lamar Norton. So I'm going to enter him right in the search tab. And as it brings up that I have 468,000 matches. So I need to filter this. Well, I'm going to go to this little button called result type, and I'm going to enter marriages. And now I can enter, I could add a location and a date and filter them here. I'm just going to head over to my map because I know it was in Utah. And I'm going to click on that. And now we have 10 matches. There it is. There is his marriage announcement. So you can search without going through all the clippings, you can search just for the marriage announcements. Boy, that's really slick. And and really, it looks like um, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and run that search first, and then start making adjustments. So we don't necessarily mark everything at the very first search time. You don't have to you can there's so many filters. And if you get if you find yourself with too many results, start using those filters and narrow the years or narrow the location. I happen to know that he was born in Utah. So I just quickly added Utah onto that filter. But if if you know, it were too many things I could keep filtering and filtering until I just have a very few results to choose from. We'll be back in just a moment with more ideas on finding your ancestors in newspapers. Today's episode is sponsored by MyHeritage, a global discovery platform enjoyed by 110 million people worldwide. MyHeritage has it all and offers a full service experience that bridges your past, present, and future. MyHeritage has developed powerful genealogy tools to enrich your family tree and take your research to the next level. 
Receive automatic matches to family trees of fellow MyHeritage users and historical records, which provide new details that you can add to your tree. Explore 12 billion historical records to uncover fascinating new insights about your ancestors. Add new information to your family tree in one click. Check your tree for inaccuracies, colorize your black and white photos, and connect with relatives around the globe. My Heritage makes it all possible and puts the discoveries at your fingertips. I've been colorizing some of my own personal family photos, and not only are they beautiful, but in many of the photos, it's actually been revealing more detail so I can see more of my family history. Growing your family tree is easier than ever before with MyHeritage. The discoveries are out there and waiting to be made. Visit MyHeritage.com and try it today. That's MyHeritage.com. All right, back to the show. Well, um, you know, Lamar and his now wife, Velma, started their young family, and they had two little children, but this simple life for the Nortons was not going to last because in just a very few short years, um, we, of course, went to war. We start to see the U.S.'s entry. So with a wife and two young children, Lamar hoped that he wasn't going to be drafted. But when it came time to register, Lamar and some of his friends loaded in a car and they headed to the registration office to register for the draft. And apparently they discussed on the way who might or might not get drafted. And everybody was sure that he was not going to get drafted because he was the only one married with two small children. Well, it was quite a shock just days later when Lamar received notice that he had been drafted and had just days to report. Well, it was apparently quite a, a, a big deal in the community that this young father had been drafted. And so I was sure that there must be something about it in the newspaper. But when I searched Lamar Norton, I, I couldn't find it. Well, this tiny small town paper, and I started adjusting my search parameters. And this notice that I did find, it was published in the paper, but that the quality of the paper was so, the printing was so poor. So his name is Lamar Norton, but you can hardly even see that. But when I Mm -hmm. adjusted my parameter and I just searched Lamar and Norton in the right time frame in the right town, that's when I found this little announcement that he had been drafted. Well, so I, I figured that, you know, here he is, he's going to be heading off to war, knowing that my grandmother is going to be left at home with two small children. I thought, what is she going to do? What's her life going to be like now? He's her husband, young husband is heading off to war. She doesn't know when he's going to come back, or there's always the possibility that he might not come back. So I started searching for my grandmother in the paper. Her name was Velma Norton. And I found this clipping that shows that what does she do? She decides to go home and live with her parents while her husband is off fighting. Um, So using her name, I could kind of search that and also adjust the perimeters for that same time. So Lamar heads off to basic training. And in this training, he learns how to repair tanks. They they start uh, training him to become a mechanic. And he was assigned to serve with Patton's 3rd Army, and he was trained to repair tanks. Well, right before he headed off to Europe, he was able to come home one last time on furlough. And then I found a little announcement about that in the paper. He's home visiting his wife and his two children and his parents. And I find it very interesting if you look at this date, November 9th, 1944, Now, if you notice that date and you're familiar with World War II history, we know that there is about to be a very big, um, pivotal battle in World War II. And it's one of the costliest battles of the war. And it was the Battle of the Bulge. Well, Lamar headed off to Europe. And for the next several months, he was involved in just horrific fighting. he came home from the war with something that was called shell shock. Um, Today we know it as PTSD. Um, 
I remember as a little girl that if the if a balloon would pop or there would be a loud clap of thunder, he would just dive under the table. He it was just kind of an involuntary reaction. Um, mm-hmm. Such tremendous fighting that he was a part of. Um, he uh, there was one instance where he was repairing a tank. Um, the tra- the track had come off the tank and he was under fire and the tank was surrounded by the enemy and he was under fire and managed to repair this tank and get the tank on the road. And for that, he received a bronze star. Well, maybe you have an ancestor that fought in the uh, in World War Two or in any military battle. And sometimes they came home and they didn't want to talk about it. I know that. Um, my grandfather's brother said at his funeral, when your grandfather came home, he wanted to forget what he had seen. And so as a, a way to help reconstruct his military history, I've gone to newspapers.com. Um, you can search for things like if you know what battalion or unit your ancestor served in, you can search for that. If you know a specific battle that they participated in, you can learn about that battle. It's it's just like we talked about creating a context. So even though all of the Battle of the Bulge newspaper articles I read didn't talk about my grandfather specifically, I was able to get a context and understand this traumatic fighting that he endured and what that might have been like. Um, Another wonderful tip is to look for their obituary because oftentimes veterans obituaries will list what unit they served in or what battles they may have participated in. Well, that's a great point. And how interesting to take perhaps even records that we've already found and go back and pull those pieces of information off and then go search them in the newspapers. It's a great way to add a story, to create a context, and to understand the experiences that our ancestors went through. Well, um, Patton's Third Army, uh, following the Battle of the Bulge, they started moving across Germany. And um, on, on April 4th, 1945, they came across a concentration camp, and it was called Ordruff Concentration Camp. Now, this was the very first concentration camp that was liberated by the Americans. These young men just couldn't believe their eyes. They did not know what they were seeing. They came across soldiers that were had been killed. They um, saw bodies stacked like cordwood. Um, they were just, they just had never seen anything like it. They called to their superiors and they said, we have found something amazing here. We think you better come and see it. And generals Eisenhower and Patton and Bradley all came. They said, don't touch anything. We want to see with our own eyes what you've found. So they arrived and they were searching through this, this camp and they found the bodies and they found a, a pyre where there, where there were remains from burned soldiers as the Nazis tried to destroy the evidence. And um, it was so traumatic for Eisenhower and Patton and Bradley that, that um, uh, General Patton became physically sick by the things that he'd seen. Everybody was just astounded. So even though I'm not seeing my grandfather by name, here's an example of somebody who was right there that that was side by side with him, giving a personal account to their hometown paper when they got home from the war. So I'm able to really understand the, the impact that this had on my grandfather. And really, it was just so sobering and powerful to, to understand what he had experienced. And like I say, when he came home, he didn't want to talk about it. And a lot of these soldiers' um, military personnel files were gathered up. They were sent to the National Personnel Records Center where they were stored. It was in St. Louis, Missouri. 
And Lisa, you're probably familiar with the fire that occurred there, I'm guessing. In yeah, in the absolutely. 19 yeah, so sad in the 1970s this facility caught fire and between 16 and 18 million personnel records were destroyed. And so so many of us that are trying to do research on our ancestors and we no longer have their military papers, newspapers are a wonderful way to try to reconstruct their story and to understand the experiences that they uh, endured why they were uh, in the armed services. Jenny, that's a, it's a harrowing story. I can't imagine. And, and I notice as you discover it in the papers that now you've moved out from those very local papers that you knew where you were finding his name and you're really reaching into newspapers across the country potentially for these kinds of stories from people who maybe served right next to him or who saw the same things he did. And you also, I noticed some of these were fairly recent newspapers. So here you're pulling from something maybe from the 90s or from 2005 and um, a soldier's recollections. And, And yet many of those original articles came back from the 40s. So we have this wealth of information that spans so many decades and potentially holds these stories. And and it's common, you're exactly right, Lisa, and it's common, particularly with monumental um, anniversaries. You might see mm-hmm. the paper going back to soldiers 20 years, 50 years, and, and so, saying, you know, it's the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Ordruff. Can you tell us about your experience? And so for me, these papers were able to tell the story that my grandfather couldn't. They were able to shed light on what he experienced when he wasn't willing to talk about that. We'll be back in just a moment with more ideas on finding your ancestors in newspapers. Are you in search of a free facility to help you take your family history research to the next level? Well, consider planning a trip to one of my favorite places, the Genealogy Center at Allen County Public Library. It's located in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the Genealogy Center is the second largest center in the nation for genealogy and one of the best places to research family histories due to its really extensive collection and services. The Genealogy Center has more than 1 million physical items, and they've got trained genealogists who work there, who all have unique specialties, and they're available to help you find success for free. Use the services and materials at the Genealogy Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana to take your family history research to that next level. Plan your trip or book an appointment at Visit Fort Wayne dot com slash genealogy. That's visit fortwayne.com slash genealogy. Today's episode is sponsored by newspapers.com. It's the largest online newspaper archive. Find your ancestors in the paper with a quick search on newspapers.com. Your family didn't need to be famous to appear in the papers. Start with obituaries, marriage announcements, and birth announcements, and then go beyond to explore the local news, society pages, classified ads, photos, and much more. Maybe you'll find a letter to the editor written by your grandmother or a photo of your grandpa's high school sports team. You never know what you'll find until you look. Search through more than 760 million newspaper pages from across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and beyond in just seconds. Their easy-to-use search feature lets you filter your results by date, location, a specific paper, and more. Find something interesting? The newspapers.com clipping tool makes it a snap to share it with family and friends. You can even save it directly to your ancestry tree. For listeners of this podcast, newspapers.com is offering new subscribers 20% off a publisher extra subscription so that you can start exploring today. Just use the code genealogy gems at checkout. All together as one word, genealogy gems at checkout at newspapers.com. All right, back to the show. Was there any more of the story that you found? I mean, you've already found so much. What else did you um, pull out of newspapers? Well, now that that he had 
endured the Battle of the Bulge. He had participated in the liberation of this concentration camp. We were close to V-Day. Things were getting better. The war was starting to wind down. And it wasn't too long until I came across his discharge notice. He had been discharged in October 1945. And I was able to find that discharge notice in his little local hometown paper. I learned that his unit was one of the few units that received the Presidential Citation Award and that he received a Silver Star Award. I learned about some of his military decorations. So that's a, a, another great tip. Um, when you're searching for your ancestors, if they were wounded, if they received awards, if they were taken prisoner of war, all of those are likely to be mentioned in the paper. So search for some of those things in addition to battles, places, uh, some of those other things where you might be able to help reconstruct their military story. Well, in 1945, Lamar came home, and I found this in a, in a Salt Lake City paper, and it listed all of the Utah soldiers that were heading home. And down at the bottom, I see uh, pri Private First Class Lamar Norton. And what's great about this is be it tells me what ship he came home on. And so oh. that gives me a further avenue to research. I can go to the papers. Um, I can learn about that journey. I can read about when that ship docked in New York. Um, perhaps there was rough weather or sickness or a death on the journey, and I can find out all about that now that I have the name of a ship. Well, Lamar made it home to Utah, and he's a notice saying that he has now returned home and he's reunited with his family and his parents and he was recently discharged and um, they're, the family is being reunited and moving back in together and it's, I'm just kind of able to put this story together. Well, you can kind of see how much context and color this provides for his military experiences in the newspaper. Boy, that's terrific. And as you found each one, did you use any special techniques? I mean, can we do things like the quotation marks around his name? You mentioned in the very first article that you found that you kind of had separated the name Lamar and Norton and not worried about having it be right next to each other. Can you tell newspapers.com I want this name to appear first name, last name? You absolutely can. I'm going to go to the um, newspapers.com homepage and I'm going to share some little strategies that will make this easier. I can enter Lamar Norton. Well, one of my favorite tips is to add quotation marks before and after his name because that is going to only return results where those two names appeared together. And so instead of every mention of Lamar and every mention of Norton, I'm only going to have results that are Lamar Norton. So I can search there and you can see this map off to the right. All of these states have different colors. If there is a gray state, there is no mention of Lamar Norton in any of these states. Um, there's gradation of the color and the darker the color gets, the more mentions. Lamar is from Utah. So when I click on that, I see, you know, that there's 251 results of Lamar Norton in Utah. And now this is kind of cool. This breaks it down by county. So I know for a while Lamar lived in Uinta County. He also lived in Salt Lake County. He lived for a time in Davis County. So I can actually search through the various counties and see if that is my Lamar Norton. I imagine there might be an article that comes after his death, but you could really target one particular area of time, couldn't you? You absolutely could. And maybe I only want to know about his military experiences. I can search 1941 to 1945, and I have 42 matches. A lot of them are him talking about his, mm -hmm. his military experiences. So many of these are the Vernal Express. This was the little newspaper in the area that he lived. So I can use these filters by, by year, maybe 
he's landing in New York and the New York paper does an interview. I don't want to just have Utah results. I can remove the state. I can make it as wide or as narrow as I want. And I would really recommend just playing with those dates. Um, maybe Lamar gave an interview or your ancestor gave an interview to the paper about their World War II experiences, but it was in the 1990s. So don't limit yourself if you want to know World War II history. It might not be in World War II years. You might find it at a later date. That's a great point. And a great point about not necessarily limiting yourself to his state, because I did notice when he was coming home with the Utah troops, that was a newspaper from New York, right? Yes, because the Liberty ship had landed in New York. Exactly. I'm guessing newspapers.com is continually adding papers. Is there a chance that it can tell me if something new, it gets loaded onto the the website? Yes, you can set up an alert. And if you, because we are constantly adding new papers. In fact, we hit a milestone that we hit 750 million pages of newspapers. And this morning I got onto the site. In fact, I'll show you, I'll go back to the homepage and it counts we're already up to 755 million pages. So just in the past week and a half, we've added another 5.3 million pages. So you can set up an alert to let you know for, you know, any particular search that you want to, you know, set up an alert for, you can do that. And if there's new content that meets the criteria, you will get a notice that there is a new clipping that relates to that. Wow. Well, Any other tips about how people can uh, find information about their ancestors? Well, you know, as you continue to search, my grandfather had been home a couple of years and I was searching and I found a notice that it's something I've heard about many times in my life. It's 1949 and Lamar and his young family, another baby's added now and they are living in Clearfield, Utah when his little daughter who happens to be my mother, was returning home from kindergarten and got hit by a truck. Well, you can imagine how traumatic this would be to this little family and what an impact that would have on their lives. So I can continue to tell his story. You know, his name is in that, but you can imagine as a father, that being your little daughter, how traumatic that would be and what an impact that would have on you and your story. My gosh. And and uh, obviously, she survived all that. But it just goes to show that there's just so many pieces to the puzzle. I see many names listed here. So I imagine yes. there's opportunities to search for some of those people too. And you know what, I know who these people are, because they're in my family oh, tree. Right. But if you didn't know, and you're trying to discover right. your family tree, if people are rushing to the hospital, and there's been an accident, and it's a familiar surname that what a great tip. And maybe I can, you know, who is Harvey Hollinger? Who is Mrs. Harvey Hollinger? Maybe I can do some research and um, search for her in the paper and get an idea of how she fits into this family and into this story. So I see we can we can download the clipping, we can um, edit it. Uh, Will you promise to come back and help us get organized and and share all this great information? I would love to. And, and you know, when you are putting together a story for your ancestor, this is such a wonderful way to, they become more than a name on the paper. They become real and relatable. And it's no longer just this um, sterile name. It's a person. And it's a person whose life impacts your life. And you get to tell their story through the papers. It's just like you say, they don't have to be famous. They don't have to be a notable person. My grandfather was the most ordinary person, but I was able to kind of reconstruct things that impacted his life and must have impacted how he parented, how he raised his family. And that impacts how I was raised. And and we're all connected Absolutely. And very well said. And even a man who didn't even necessarily want to come back and talk about it might have been a more private person. And yet look how much could be found in newspapers. 
Um, Jenny, this has been fascinating. I love it. Uh, We all have the task now of kind of making our list and going and finding all of these wonderful elements. And of course, newspapers.com is a great place to do that. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your grandfather's story. It's amazing. Thank you so much. And I, I just wish you the best of luck as you dive into your own research. And I'm so excited for you to find amazing clippings about your family. Well, what did I tell you? I mean, Jenny can really find gems in old newspapers and, and all of us can, you know, as we said, you don't have to have famous ancestors to be able to find uh, wonderful and interesting articles. And sometimes, as she mentioned, you know, we're not finding an article necessarily specifically about our ancestor, but we are perhaps uncovering a firsthand account of something that they would have experienced themselves. And that's sure the next best thing. So I hope you're excited about uh, digging into it. If you find your ancestor's story using some of these strategies, I would love to have you drop me a line. Email me at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. Let me know how your search is going. I love sharing your success stories here on the podcast. And if you would like to take a look at the video version of this interview, that's also available over at our website and uh, on our Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. And you can learn more about using newspapers for uh, your genealogical research, again, over at our website. Uh, Jenny was on the the YouTube channel not long ago talking about finding old family recipes. Uh, That was amazing. I may have to find a way to to fit that audio into an upcoming podcast episode so you can kind of listen to it on the go. Uh, But it was really interesting to not only be able to find a relative's recipe, but actually using newspapers to kind of uncover a bit of culinary history. If if you like to cook, I think you'll enjoy that video. So uh, that's again over at the website and I'll have a link in the show notes. So yes, there's always show notes for our podcast episodes and all our videos. Uh, If you go to genealogygems.com, Uh, You can also find us at lisalouisecook.com. They both lead to the same place. And this is episode number 268. Just go to the section on podcasts, uh, look for the number 268. They're all there in order and click through. You're going to find the show notes page and that's going to have links to everything that we talked about and a summary of the strategies that we've been talking about here today so that you could follow along and do it yourself. And if you're a Genealogy Gems Premium member, of course, you get to download the ad-free version of the show notes as your handout. For future reference, it's super easy to do a quick search if you're looking for something specific. And again, that's one of the perks of being a premium member. And if you are a premium member, I would encourage you to head over to the premium video section and check out my class on how to find your family history in newspapers. I've got even more websites that are going to help you. Many of them are absolutely free. So be sure to check that out. Now, if you're not a member yet, you can learn more about that on our homepage at genealogygems.com. But most importantly, if you're kind of new to this podcast, uh, head on over to the website and subscribe to our free email newsletter. It comes out weekly and you're going to get a bonus PDF um, download when you do sign up. But it's a great way to stay in touch and find out what's coming up here on the show. Thank you so much for listening, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. 